Today in a speech remembering the people killed on 9-11, delivered to an audience of a thousand on a military base in Alaska, the President of the United States said this. On this day, I'm thinking about a friend of mine named Davis, who grew up with me in Delaware. 22 years ago, he and his family had just passed the first year without their youngest son of three sons who died in a boating accident at age 15. His oldest son, Davis Jr., was just six days into a new job on the 104th floor of the South Tower of the World Trade Center. Davis went straight to ground zero to search for his son, searched deep into the last, as he referred to it, endings of hope, as he put it. A few days later, I called David to talk his father's know about losing a piece of your soul. I was on my way to speak to students at the University of Delaware to try to make sense of what happened. And guess what? Having lost two sons within a year, Davis told me, just tell them, Joe, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The terrorists stole 297, 2,977 souls that day. 2,977 souls. Forever rolling the future of so many families and the story of our nation. Today, Donald Trump, alone in a room, said this. We will never forget. Today, on this solemn anniversary of those monstrous attacks, we remember the 2,977 precious souls who were savagely taken from us on that morning 22 years ago, leaving a void that can never be filled. Donald Trump has been lying about 9-11 since 9-11. Here is Donald Trump's most vile lie about 9-11. How did he Dr. keep us Trump. safe when the World Trade Center came down? The world, is, I lost hundreds of friends. And the moment Donald Trump said that he lost hundreds of friends on 9-11 during a 2016 Republican primary debate, I publicly called that a lie. I knew it was impossible that Donald Trump lost hundreds of friends on 9-11. The next morning on Meet the Press, Donald Trump changed his lie about losing hundreds of friends on 9-11. I was there. I lost many, many friends in that tragedy. Hundreds became many, many. And once again, I knew that that was a lie and immediately called it a lie on Twitter. Donald Trump followed my tweets very closely in those days. And so he knew that he was caught in that lie. But he also knew that I was the only one who caught him. And so he never said it again. Donald Trump lost zero friends on 9-11. Donald Trump attended zero funerals of 9-11 victims. Zero. But Donald Trump tried to steal the grief of all of the families who lost someone on 9-11. He tried to steal the grief of all of the thousands and thousands of people who lost loved ones and dear friends and co-workers on 9-11. The United States Capitol was unharmed in the terrorist attack on 9-11 because of the heroic passengers and crew on United Flight 93 who forced the terrorists to crash that plane in a field in Pennsylvania as it was heading for Washington, D.C. Today, on Capitol Hill, there was a wreath left by the Flight Attendants Union next to this plaque that commemorates the 40 people who were killed when that plane crashed. The plaque reads, in memory of the passengers and crew of United Airlines Flight 93, whose brave sacrifice on September 11, 2001, not only saved countless lives, but may have saved the U.S. Capitol from destruction. Al-Qaeda terrorists could not harm the Capitol, but a mob carrying Trump flags did on January 6th. Here is video of the Trump attackers of the Capitol on January 6th fighting their way into the building through one entrance with the plaque of Flight 93 on the wall just outside the frame of this security camera video. In the 21st century, only two groups have tried to attack the United States Capitol, Al-Qaeda, led by Osama bin Laden, and Trump supporters led by Donald Trump. 
Only the Trump attackers actually did damage to the Capitol. Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Daniel Goldman of New York, whose district includes the site of the 9-11 terrorist attack on the World Trade Center. He's a member of the House Oversight Committee, served as a majority counsel for the first impeachment trial of Donald Trump, and he's a former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. Congressman Goldman, thank you very much for joining us on this solemn day, not just in your district, but uh, throughout the country. Uh, I know you were... Uh, at Ground Zero today for the annual commemoration there. Uh, what was it like to be there again today? You know, it's it's never gets uh, easier, Lawrence, just to sit, stand there uh, among all the elected officials, so many survivors, so many military veterans, so many members of the Fire Department of New York and the Police Department, NYPD, Police Department of New York, uh, who lost so many lives uh, on that day. And you sit there and you listen to family members read out names of loved ones who innocently perished on that day uh, while waiting for the bell to ring for a moment of silence when the planes crashed into the towers, when the towers came down. It is a haunting, and it is a reminder of what others around the world feel about our democracy and feel about the freedom that we have and the great country that we have. And that is not only the reason for jealousy, but it's also the reason for hatred for those who don't provide those freedoms and that democracy to their people who want to destroy us. And it is uh, something that we can never forget. And it's incredibly important to continue to remember 9-11 uh, every single year so that we do never forget. We, uh, we saw President Biden uh, on his return uh, from Asia stopping in Alaska, specifically uh, on this day, 9-11, to speak about it uh, to a military audience, an audience that included first responders. And he, and he had a real story to tell about a friend of his that he grew up with who suffered a terrible loss of his son uh, on 9-11. Uh, Donald Trump has no such story to tell, and, and he grew up in New York City he, and started off lying about losing uh, friends on 9-11, uh, but then has never mentioned it since uh, when he was caught in that lie. And, and today, the best he could do was uh, two minutes alone in a room. Never, at, Like most uh, commemorations of 9-11, Donald Trump did nothing today. Well, the thing that always sticks out to me about Donald Trump is that he went on uh, local news very shortly after the attacks and somewhat bragged about the fact that now that the World Trade Center buildings had fallen, his building at 40 Wall Street was uh, the second tallest building in New York City. And, and I think that just shows the depravity of this person uh, who has now become the uh, mantle leader of this Republican Party. And that's who the Republican Party, uh, long before he ever got into politics, that's that's who he is. And, and it is I think a very important comparison to see the humanity, uh, the compassion, the uh, dedication and commitment to the United States of America from President Biden, and you compare it to the hollow statements uh, from Donald Trump, uh, who also bragged and sort of gloated about the destruction on 9-11. And that is a perfect comparison between the two of them. I give Governor Ron DeSantis credit. He was there today at Ground Zero. He came to pay his respects, uh, and, and he deserves some credit for doing that, for getting out of, uh, you know, his, his living room, where Donald Trump apparently was, uh, to come and do that. And, um, but it is, it's a sad state of the Republican Party that that's who the clear leader is to become their nominee again.